YouTube, welcome back. This session, we're going to be looking at JavaScript, we're going to be looking at uh, variables, functions, arrays, and how to get your first JavaScript running on a page. As usual, please don't forget to like and subscribe. There are comments down in below and links to other videos. Uh, if you haven't done the introduction to HTML and CSS, I strongly recommend you do those. And there's links to the code on the website as well. And let's get started. So what is JavaScript? JavaScript is the last piece of the puzzle when it comes to building web pages. We can create content and style that content, and, but we have no way of manipulating that content once it's been created. JavaScript fills that gap for us, it solves that problem. JavaScript is a full programming language um, and allows us to manipulate the data we have. It's the most complex way of doing things, but it's also the most powerful. Well, where to start? Uh, the simplest way to add JavaScript to a page is to add a script tag inside the head tags. And the simplest program that we can write is this one. A console.log is a way of debugging and allows us to write information directly to the uh, console output, which we'll see in a minute. Quick breakdown of the code. Uh, console.log is in fact a function um, and we can pass to it uh, what's called a string, which is any collection of letters, numbers, or symbols that are contained inside inverted commas. You'll notice the line ends in a semicolon. Unlike other languages, the semicolon isn't uh, strictly needed in JavaScript, um, but it is really good practice to put in as it can lead to some bugs if you leave it out. So if we wanted to have a, have a quick look at that example, we could open up brackets, right click to create a new file, call this jstest.html, and then create the usual elements we'd expect to see. Now we can create the script elements that we mentioned before and put our first program in there. When we've saved that, for simplicity, I'm going to show you this running not inside the brackets auto live preview uh, and instead going to run the file directly. So to do that, I just go to the folder, double click on the file, select Chrome and the file loads up. And notice we can't actually see anything, that's because there was nothing inside the body. If we right click and go to inspect and then to console, we can see our hello world message. As you can see, we wrote console.log and that's written it here for us. If we click on there, we can see it points us to the code that actually printed that statement. Now that you've written your first piece of JavaScript, let's have a look at some more complex ideas. First thing to look at is variables. Uh, variables exist as a, uh, a named thing that has a, a value that can change throughout the operation of the program. That's quite an abstract description, but as we start to use them, we should begin to understand more about what that means. To create a variable, use the var keyword. The var keyword is a reserved keyword uh, in JavaScript, and that you use that to create a variable. If you leave the var keyword off, you will still create a variable in vanilla uh, JavaScript, but it's very bad practice as it creates it globally and it means that it can interact with other ones as well. Best practice is always to put a, a var keyword in front. And then after that, you have the name of the variable. I use a naming convention throughout these slides where if a variable name begins with my, it means it can be anything. Uh, my var, for instance, could, you could name that absolutely anything. And in fact, my var is a terrible name for a variable because it doesn't really describe what it does. A better name would be something like greeting. And then we write equals because we're assigning a value to it. And then we pass it a string of hello world. You can use both double quotations and single quotations to make strings, um, but they must match. So you can't start a string with a double quotation and end it with a single one. That wouldn't work. As usual, you see the semicolon on the end of the line. The next example is of uh, my var2, and we're setting that equal to 86. Now, this time it's a number, so we can perform arithmetic operations on it. A uh, third kind, which we won't be using for a while, but uh, it, just to make you aware of, is a, a complex object. MyVar3 is being set to this complex object value, giving it several sub-variables on top of it in the form of keys and the values of those keys themselves. So we have key value and key to value um, as well. The last kind of variable is called a Boolean variable. 
This can be either true or false, and you can flip between them. These are particularly useful for doing logic operations, where you're comparing things or trying to make decisions within the code. Variables can also be reassigned at any point, and you can assign them the same value as a different one. So in this example, we have console.log myvar, which would print hello world, and then we're reassigning the value of myvar to be the same as myvar2, which is 86. So console.log of myvar would now print 86. It's worth noting that the values are overwritten and not reassigned. So we haven't swapped the values of myvar and myvar2, they're now just both the same. Let's have a look at those variables and see what they look like in the browser. So go back to our previous program and underneath we'll create our variables. You'll notice when I write uh, console.log of myvar, I don't put it in inside inverted commas. If I did, it would just print out the word myvar and not the value of myvar, which is what we actually want. And now when we run this program, save the file and go back to our folder, double click on the file itself and then right click inspect and go to the console tab. And now we can see we've got our initial hello world that we printed at the top. And then from where we printed myvar, we've got hello world with a lowercase h. And then we reassign the value and we print myvar again. And this time we end up with 86. Next up, we have functions. And functions allow us to create reusable pieces of code that we can call later on. Uh, to make a function, you use the function keyword, as we can see in this example. And we've given it a name of my underscore function. And then there's a bracket bracket and then curly braces to incorporate all of the code. The function includes any code enclosed between those two curly braces. And as soon as the last curly brace is closed, as soon as that last curly brace is closed, any other code is outside of that function. In order to call the function, we use the syntax used at the bottom here. You just simply write the name of the function, bracket bracket, to tell it to call that function. And as, as usual, we have the semicolon at the end of the line. And here we have a, a rather trivial example of a function which simply adds one to whatever the value you pass in is. This function also uses the return value, meaning it returns a value you can assign to a variable at the output of it. So in this case, you pass myval in as what's called an argument, and then the return statement uses that argument and simply adds one to it. Underneath are some examples. So we're creating a variable x and we're assigning it the value of whatever is turned from our add one function when we pass in 12. Uh, in this case, obviously, x will be 13. We're then creating a variable y and adding one to the number 24. So as you might imagine, y will be a number, value of 25. And in the last example, var z is equal to add one to a string of hello. Now, instinctively, you might think this is wrong and will somehow crash, but in fact, it doesn't. What it does is turns the one inside the function into a string and sticks it on the end. And we will print out hello one. So let's see an example of this. If we go back to brackets, we can get rid of all of the code before and create a function. And now that we have our code, we can run it in the way that we did before and open up the console. And we can see our expected outputs, 13, 25, and hello one. The last thing we're gonna look at today are arrays. Arrays are lists of objects. Uh, could be collections of strings, numbers, or complex objects. And here are some examples. An array is simply a variable. So we're using the var keyword and then giving it a name, in this case, my array equals and the array is defined with inside the square brackets. It's any number of items separated by a comma in between. In the first example, it's three strings, one, two, and three. In the second example, it's five numbers, one, two, three, four, and five. And in the last example, it's a mixture of numbers and strings. It's actually a very bad idea to mix types like this. 
really in JavaScript an array doesn't really make sense if it has different types in it and you should really only group things together that are the same. So in this case you should only use numbers or strings and store the other things separately if you need them. The reason for this is because at some point you will have a bug. It's almost a guarantee. I know this from bitter experience sadly having made that mistake myself. In JavaScript uh, arrays are what are called zero based meaning that in fact to get the first item you use an index that is not one it is in fact zero so here's an example of that we have my array of zero one two three uh, all strings and we can do console.log of array square bracket zero and that will grab only the first element of the item and then the second element can be referenced by using one as the index and the third element is two and so on and so forth. so if we go back to our brackets example, we can have a go with arrays ourselves. And now when we run that, we can right click, show the console, and we can see its output 0, 1, and 3, as we'd expect. Thanks very much for joining us. Hopefully that's demystified JavaScript for you a bit, and you understand variables, functions, and arrays better. Please don't forget to like and subscribe to catch further videos as they come out, and I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.